Biden, we now have a new category of crime. You know what it's called? It's called migrant crime. And this category is turning out to be worse than any crime we've ever had in our country. I saw things that I've never thought. These are tough people that come over, you know, and they do. They come out of prisons, they come out of these institutions, and they're rough people. These are rough people. These, the only good thing is they make our criminals look like relatively nice people, okay? I saw something in New York. I've never seen it before. I've seen guys sort of, you know, run and hit a cop and run away. I, they were having fist fights with the cops in the middle of Madison Avenue. Fist fights, where the cops are at. These guys are at. They were from Venezuela, and uh, you know how long they'd last in Venezuela if they did that in Venezuela. I'd say they'd be alive for about two minutes before they got shot. But we have a little different way. We have a politically correct atmosphere. Uh, but what, what the people that they're sending into this country, is not the deal. And we have a new form of crime. It's migrant crime. I was going to call it Biden migrant crime. But if you do that, it's too long. It doesn't work. It's like I have a new name for Gavin Newsom. I have a new name. Ba do you know what it is, right? Does anybody know what it is? New scum. New scum. Gavin Newsom. I don't know if it's good or bad. We'll find out. I'd love to run against him, actually. This guy says, California's doing so well. It's not doing well. It's doing horribly, actually. Now, Gavin Newsom. <laughs> Last week, a beautiful 22-year-old nursing student in Georgia, beautiful, beautiful girl. I spoke with her parents yesterday. Beautiful, beautiful person. Lake and Riley was barbarically attacked while she was out on a morning run. She wanted to keep herself in great shape. Beautiful person. She was brutally assaulted, horrifically beaten, kidnapped, and savagely murdered. Almost beyond recognition. Almost beyond, think of it, almost beyond recognition. The monster charge in her death is an illegal alien migrant who was led into our country and released into our communities by crooked Joe Biden. Wouldn't have come in because we had a very tough policy on, especially the criminals. We were watching them all. We had the best. We had the safest border in the history of our country. Now we have the worst border in the history of the world. We mourn this terrible loss, and we send our love to Lakin's family. I spoke with the mother and the father. The devastation is just, like, incredible. What can you say? You know, it's hard to talk to people. They, they've just been devastated. The thing that the person, the, the element of life that they love the most was just taken away from them, taken away. Maybe in heaven they meet again, maybe in heaven. But other than that, there's, there's no hope of ever, ever seeing her again. And she was beautiful. The mother said, oh, she was such a good student. She was the best nurse in her class. She was going to be a great nurse. I said, I know, I know, I know. So, so devastating. Had the funeral, and it's just, uh, they can never be the same. Just last month in suburban Maryland, outside Washington, D.C., a two-year-old boy was out walking with his mother in a public park when they were caught in the crossfire of a gun battle between two vicious thugs. That two-year-old boy was struck. A bullet struck him in a very bad location. The illegal alien migrant charged with his murder had been previously arrested multiple times by different police forces and released every time under Montgomery County, Maryland sanctuary law, very liberal laws in Montgomery County, as you probably know. His murder is blood in the hands of Joe Biden and every Democrat who fought to preserve sanctuary cities. They're very dangerous. They're very bad, very bad. In Washington, D.C. last month, three metropolitan police officers were savagely shot and gravely wounded by an illegal alien barricaded in an apartment, shot him, and just surprise attack. And you know, three weeks ago, a young man who worked for me in the White House, fantastic young man, was carjacked. And rather than saying, get out of your car, he just shot him right through the head and killed him it almost instantly, died the following day. Great person. Everybody that was in my administration, they loved him. Uh, the wife, the family. The wife was walking to the car. He was picking up the wife where she worked 
and this guy came up, wanted the car, and shot him, and he died right in front of the wife. And this is, this is our capital. We're going to change it. We're going to change it around. We're going to be so tough. And last year, a sadistic illegal alien released by crooked Joe Biden was arrested for raping an 11-year-old girl in Texas and strangling her to death after knocking on the door of her home. Her father later discovered her body badly beaten and stuffed under her bed. The father came home and found her like that. No one more innocent. We're not going to have one more innocent American life. It just can't. We can't let this go on. Migrant crime is going to be at a level that we've never seen crime before. We have bad crime, but now you can add this to it. They've let 15 million people. I'll tell you, that's what I think the number is, and I think it's going to be 18 million by the time we get the worst president in our history out of office. This is why a central question in this election is whether the foreign armies of Joe Biden is smuggled across our border. He's letting armies of people come in. Military age. They smuggle them across our border. They walk into our border. They don't even have to smuggle anymore. For a while, they were smuggling. Now they're not smuggling. They just walk across and do whatever they want. We are not going to allow them to stay in our country. We don't want to see what's going on. Why is it? We're going to get them out. We're going to take them out, get out and go home. But we're going to, if we have to, we're going to get them home. Or we're going to have to do worse than that. I don't want to fill up our prisons. I don't want to fill up our prisons. You know, our prisons are already full with other people's prisoners. You have to see the prison population all over the world is at the lowest point it's been in many decades because they're dumping their prisoners into our country. Doesn't this stupid guy understand this? And it makes sense. It makes so much sense. If I were running Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Mexico, or the Congo, or any country, Brazil, a lot coming in from Brazil, a lot coming in from Venezuela, Nothing more expensive than storing a prisoner in a jail for 60 years. But, of course, they don't spend quite as much as us. They spend very little. When you go in those jails, it's the worst, the worst that you could imagine. But how does he allow this to happen? Anybody would say it. I said it a long time ago. As soon as I heard what they were doing, I said, oh, they're going to end up emptying. I know all these guys. I know many of them. And they're very streetwise, smart people. You know, they're streetwise. Joe's not streetwise. Joe is just a dumb guy. He's a dumb guy. Nobody, nobody respects him. He's lost. And again, I never talked about him until I got indicted four times on charges that should have never been brought. These are all Biden indictments. If Joe Biden's illegal alien migrants do not go back to their countries, we will never get our country back. So if you elect Donald J. Trump on November 5th, most important day in our history, remember that. I promise you they'll be going back to their countries. I don't know if you saw Maduro uh, in Venezuela two days ago. They sent many of their criminals and their jail jailbirds. I'm sure some are fine people, but they all come out of jail, or they people that they don't want. They don't. They keep the ones they want. You know that, right? They keep a lot of productive people. They're not going to lose them. They're like every other country. You want to have certain people. Maybe you don't want to have others. We don't have a choice because we take everybody's discards. So Venezuela made the statement that we're going to send them out to the United States, and we're never going to accept them back. We're never going to accept them back. And when I got to the White House, you remember that, I was met by generals. I said, get these people out, MS-13. They say, sir, they won't allow them back in. I said, yes, they will. I said, no, they won't. El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala, three countries. And I said, what do you mean they won't? Under the Biden administration, meaning vice president, because he was supposed to be in charge. But everything he's in charge of doesn't work out. His foreign policy is the worst of any human being in history. Look at Afghanistan. The worst. But under Obama and Biden, 
they couldn't get him back in. And I was told by the general, sir, they won't accept him. I said, which countries? They named those three countries. So I say, how much uh, foreign aid do we give them? Sir, we give them approximately $750 million a year. Now, that's peanuts compared to what we give others, okay? We give to everybody. We're stupid. But they give $750 million. So I said, that's all right. They won't take them back, right? Yeah, you watch. Immediately, I immediately cut off all funds going to those three countries. The next day, almost simultaneously, but separate, I got calls from the heads, presidents, of those three countries. Sir, I understand there's a misunderstanding. I said, yeah, you won't take the people back that you sent over to us, because they send them, don't. You know, the caravans, they put the people in there. Murderers, drug dealers. I said, yeah, you don't understand? Well, you understand, because you won't let them in. You know, we'd send plane loads of people from Honduras or whatever, other countries too, and they'd put airplanes on the runway so the planes couldn't land. They'd close the road so the buses couldn't go. You couldn't get them in, right? You couldn't get them in. They'd come back to the United States. So stupid. So I said, uh, you immediately cut off all foreign aid. Let them know that effective immediately they don't get $750 million anymore. And I go to the office the next morning, and lo and behold, I have three phone calls. Nice guys. Look, they're smart. You know, I'd, be, I'd do the same thing. I would. I really would. I'd send everybody, and I wouldn't let them back either. I wouldn't let them back. But if you had a president like me, I said, President, I'd love to have them back, because they're not going to have a choice. But I said, stop paying them the $750 million in foreign aid. I get three phone calls, separate calls. Uh, Sir, uh, there seems to be a misunderstanding. I said, yeah, we're not paying any more foreign aid. Why? Because you won't take back the people that you illegally sent into our country. They said, sir, we would be happy to take them back. Nobody ever told us. You know, this has gone on for 10 years, by the way. We didn't know about this particular problem, sir. We would be honored to have MS-13 brought back into our country. We, we love them very much. They are fine people. They are fine people. We would love to have them back in our country. And I solved that problem. And we took in thousands and thousands of gang members, MS-13 in particular, a really vicious gang. They love knives better than guns because it's more painful. They cut people up into little, they cut two beautiful high school kids, 16 years old, walking to school in Long Island. They cut them up into little pieces and they left them. These are the people that we're allowing into our country. And thank goodness for ICE and Border Patrol and these others. ICE, they're so tough.